We already have 58 senators that we've worked with to say they'll oppose this, a majority of the House of Representatives, and the NRA's position is we are not going to let this be adopted in the United States, and I hope every American citizen joins the NRA as an act of defiance to this U.N. plan. But we also believe that there are some things that are right. For example, as conservatives, we believe that it is right to protect the sovereignty of the United States and to make sure that we never, ever, for any circumstance, under any purpose, ever yield one ounce of our sovereignty over to some international tribunal. When they talk about the, you know, promoting this, they talk about how it's about the global arms sales. And if, if anything, they'll just be regulating the, the weapons manufacturers here in the United States to be more open and transparent about to whom they're selling outside of the country, not so much domestic sales. That, that, that's simp they may say that is simply not the case. They have consistently refused to exempt rifles, shotguns, handguns owned by American citizens. They won't even exempt sporting firearms. The fact is, this affects every single firearm. That's their philosophy. The government gets the guns, not individual citizens. And the ironic thing, Megan, you look at most of the killing that's been done over the years, it's been done by governments in that club. Russia, Soviet Union, China, North Vietnam, Korea, Uganda, Rwanda. I mean, go down the Do list. Do they support this UN treaty? Yeah, I mean, the world's worst human rights abusers are voting for this treaty. The last time Iran offered the, the proposal, Syria's going to vote for it. Cuba's going to vote for it. I mean, it is a, it's, it's such Who's going to enforce it? I mean, obviously it's not, I mean, the odds of it being approved here in the United States, not so good, right? Well, it's going to sit out there for years like the Kyoto, Kyoto Treaty. They'll have a permanent funding mechanism to try to implement this. They're already scheduling conferences up to 2018, most of which are being paid for by U.N. taxpayers. This is a bunch of nonsense. The American needs to know how bad it is. And I'll tell you this. If the glass breaks in your house at 2 a.m., the baby blue helmets of the U.N. are not going to save anybody. There's not a government or an authority on the planet it's going to save a citizen if they're in that situation. What will save them is the American constitutional right to own a firearm. And when the U.N. attacks us, they're debating all of our founding fathers that understood what this freedom means to Americans. So, Wayne, are they, are they going to hear you out one of these days? That you will get your chance to testify before the U.N. on I'm this? I'm going to go in and tell them to keep your hands off our freedoms in the U.S. This plan weakens our rights, cheapens our sovereignty, and enables every tyrant, thug, and criminal, and evil government around the world. Well, we'll see if Syria gets up and walks out on you. Over the next four months, you have a choice to make. Not just between two political parties, or even two people. It's a choice between two very different plans for our country. Governor Romney's plan would cut taxes for the folks at the very top, roll back regulations on big banks, and he says that if we do, our economy will grow and everyone will benefit. But you know what? We tried that top-down approach. It's what caused the mess in the first place. I believe the only way to create an economy built to last is to strengthen the middle class, asking the wealthy to pay a little more so we can pay down our debt in a balanced way, so that we can afford to invest in education, manufacturing, and homegrown American energy for good middle class jobs. Sometimes politics can seem very small, but the choice you face, it couldn't be bigger.